Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will talk about the robustness testing for commodity trading strategy. Hello everyone, my name is Radan Wojtko and I'm Head of Research and uh, CEO at uh, Quantpedia, the Encyclopedia of Algorithmic and Quantitative Trading Strategies. Today I would like to discuss how to perform robustness testing and how to test your uh, trading strategies, how to check if they are stable through multiple parameters, etc. The strategy that I selected for uh, this task is a skewness uh, model we built on 22 commodity futures. Skewness is one of the less known but very practical measures uh, from statistics, so it measures the asymmetry of the probability distribution of a random variable around the mean, so how much it is skewed to one or another side. Normally we have a symmetric distribution, near normal distribution, but in financial markets uh, we can have a skewed distribution to one or another side. We are using the commodity skewness trading strategy. The commodity trading strategy is described very nicely in, uh, in our database. So what we do is that we go long the negatively skewed commodities and we go short positively skewed commodities. We use 22 different commodities. So the data goes from uh, early 1990s until now day so around 33 years the skewness strategy works very well not just for the commodities it works uh, very well also in cryptocurrencies and etfs and in other assets in this article we are evaluating the skewness in the commodities the main idea for this article is uh, perform the robustness testing so see how how it performs using the different parameters if you are interested more uh, i also recommend to check the article how to choose the best period for indicators it's also the article is an older article from 2019 but it's still very valid so it's an article about how to perform robustness testing and how to choose the optimal parameter when you are uh, using some indicator for your trading strategy let's move on so here is the list of all the commodities so we are using the most liquid uh, commodities gold silver platinum crude oil etc etc so 22 of them what is the base case uh, strategy so we use daily data for a period of 12 months for the calculation of skewness and we go along the end commodities with the lowest skewness so the most negatively skewed and we short n commodities with the highest skewedness, so the most positively skewed. The n, so the number of the commodities range from uh, 1 to 11. Uh, so the first parameter we would like to check is the n, so the number of commodities. What is the impact of changing the number of commodities we have in the long and in the short leg, and how does it impact the strategy? Here is how does it look like when you have a positively skewed, when you have a negatively skewed, and when you have a symmetrical distribution. And we always analyze three variants uh, for the skewness strategy, so long short, long only, and the short only uh, portfolio. So in the first case we do the long short, so we go long and short. We also check uh, how does it perform when we go only long on certain commodities and then how the strategy performs if you go only short certain commodities let's move on here we have a long short variant and we are checking what is the performance of the strategy when we go long one commodity or short one commodity long two commodities short two commodities etc etc until we go half of the portfolio of the commodities long and another half short we are always peak based on the skewness as i mm, described uh, before that. what is the performance as we see the highest share ratio is uh, when we are concentrated so when we have exposure to the modest oh, i don't two three or until up to six uh, commodities on the long or short side so that's the sweet spot we have the highest uh, sharp ratios and highest performance uh, but what is interesting and what is the most important for us to see is if the numbers are changing rapidly and here is the first good information so it doesn't matter if you choose uh, two commodities for long and two for short or seven for long seven for short the sharp ratio is still uh, very similar so something between 0 0.6 until 0 0.8 but the resultant strategy is very stable there is only difference in the performance but yeah we can leverage that performance we can still have the same sharp ratio with the higher uh, and have a higher uh, performance if you want to leverage uh, use some leverage but the resultant uh, strategy is very very stable or performance of all of the variants and sharp ratio of the, all of the variants is very stable so it's very good formation and it means that uh, at least on this parameter so how much commodities do we pick uh, the strategy is very robust uh, now let's move on we have a long only variant for long only uh, like the volatility is significantly increased when we do not have a diversified basket of commodities so when we have just two, three or four commodities in the portfolio. It means that we have a little lower sharp ratio compared to long short portfolios, but the performance is higher. Maximum drawdown is also a little elevated. So long short strategy is more diversified, and have better sharp ratio, but long only is still performing very well with a higher performance, but little uh, higher volatility. The short only variant. So when we go only short commodities, we do not go long any other. So in 2022, the short only variant was very well or excellent hedge against geopolitical tensions so the short side is usually a very good hedge when we have the aggressive concentrated exposure less than three commodities in a short like it's a optimal strategy 
for mitigating risk, but once again we have a higher volatility. Once we started to increase the number of commodities in a, in a short leg of portfolio, the performance goes down and also the share ratio goes down. So for short leg it's better to be concentrated. Let's try to do the model expansion. So what we can try to do the next step is we can try to mix the skewness model with some other factor. In this case we tried momentum. So momentum in commodities is a very well known strategy. Uh, we are going long the best performing commodities and we are going short the worst performing. In uh, in this uh, case we tried the combination of skewness with momentum using the logical end rule. So what does it mean? So in the case of the momentum we are long n number of best performing assets at the same time short the same number of commodity futures. And in the case of skewness we are going long the number of assets with the lowest skewness and at the same time uh, we show the number of uh, commodity futures with the highest skewness. And now we want from the combination or from, co from the combined strategy we want to have both conditions fulfilled if the commodity is to be included. So if we want to have it in the long leg it must be among the commodities with the lowest skewness and it must be among the best performing. And if you want to have it in the short leg it must be among the commodities with the worst performance and also must be uh, one of the most positively skewed. So how does it look like? Now if we combine the long short momentum with the long short uh, skewness effect, we increase the performance. So the performance numbers are higher, especially going long uh, 5 and going short 5 commodities is a sweet spot. This uh, the performance is very nice with a nice sharp ratio. Unfortunately, this advantage is higher volatility. In overall, the sharp ratios are hurt. So it means the base strategy sorting only on a skewness without the uh, momentum performs better on a sharp ratio basis. If we take a look on the long only variant, once again, the performance is uh, fine but we have a higher volatility a uh, sharp ratio is uh, lower than in the case when we combine the momentum with the skewness the sharp ratios are lower than if we do it just uh, without the momentum and just just the skewness so compared to our base case skewness only momentum again adds no considerable value to performance or volatility dampening and let's uh, check the short only variant so if we check the short only for the short only variant we increase the performance but it doesn't add any advantage on a, on a sharp ratio basis the short conclusion is that unfortunately we have to refute our hypothesis that the double sorting of skewness with momentum would provide investors with the significant benefits. So it means we would advise using only single sort of skewness alone. So skewness is robust, is fine, but it doesn't make sense to mix it with the momentum. It makes sense to use it uh, alone. So that was how does it look like when we combine it with the other. And another battery of the robustness test, uh, we are checking the calculation period for the skewness. So we check how does it look like when we change the number of commodities in a portfolio. Now we check how does it look like when we change the calculation period. Uh, we originally have a period fixed to 12 months and now we try to vary it from one month to 18 months so with uh, from one month until one and a half year so it's really really wide range we always use the 7-7 variant for the commodity skewness so it means we go along seven commodities with the lowest and going short the seven commodity with the high skewness we use the log y scale to better uh, show the overall performance of the portfolios uh, because there is a bigger difference in performance between different variants and also we use the strong black line in the graph to show what is the base case so the 12 months calculation plus you can see there is a color code so all of the shades of the green are the mid interval so calculation for the skewness between 7 and 12 months we use the shades of blue for a short calculation period so for one to six months and we use the red color for the calculations that are higher than 12 months. What does the chart suggest? The su chart suggests that the optimal calculation period is between 7 and 12 months. The base case for us is 12 months. We can have a better performance but a little lower sharp ratio when we use 10 or 11 months for skewness calculation but I mean anything from 7 to 12 months has an interesting sharp ratio so between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7. The robustness uh, plateau goes until 14 months so we can say that from 7 until 4 14 months the window for the calculation of the skewness is performing well and it looks satisfactory the performance looks satisfactory and also the sharp ratio looks satisfactory so we, mm, really we can say that the strategy is robust and is robust not just by how many uh, commodities we pick but also uh, how we calculate the skewness I would say I would still pick 12 months for the calculation of the skewness. I mean, the 12 months is like the natural number. It's one year, so it makes sense to use one year number or one year calculation for the skewness. One year window for the calculation of the skewness. How does it look like for a long only variant? For long only variant, once again, 
so the performance and sharp pressure are satisfactory uh, for the window from 7 until 14 months. Anything uh, lower than 7, the sharp ratio and performance is going down and uh, it's, it's the same if we uh, move over the 15 months. For the short only variant, here we have the biggest differences. So for the short only variants, only I would say the calculations for the, uh, for the skewness that uses the window 11, 12 or 10, 11, 12 months are the satisfactory. Other, if it significantly deviates in each direction, our performance also sharp ratio significantly decreases. So the short only variant is the most susceptible to change this parameter. Long only variant is more, more robust, but long short portfolio is, I would say, really, really quite robust. What is the short conclusion? I mean, the goal of this article was to run the battery of the robustness test. So we wanted to evaluate the base 12 month variant of skewness. And what is the conclusion? I mean, the significant part of the performance sharp ratio are retained in most of the strategies tested sub variants. So we can say that the skewness strategy is really, really robust. We hoped for improvement of the strategy by using the momentum, but unfortunately double sorted variants of momentum with uh, skewness doesn't offer any advantage. But overall, I would say strategy performs very well and robustness testing was very successful. Just a side uh, final note on strategy implementation. So we are using the community futures. Yes, the strategy may be replicated using ETFs with some tracking error. There are some commodities that are not tracked by ETFs, so we would probably have a smaller investment universe, but we can uh, easily uh, replicate the strategy by using ETFs if standalone futures. Or we can use CFDs in case we have a favorable tax overnight uh, margin treatment from our broker. So, thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you liked it. Uh, all of the links are in the description, and I hope that you join me in the next video interested then pick another video to learn more or subscribe to quantpedia pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research